Today we're going to be talking about simple interest. So simple interest is interest that you earn on the original investment that you make. So interest is kind of a small percentage of the money that you invest that you get kind of as a bonus uh, when you lend somebody money or sometimes it's extra money you have to pay if you borrow money from somebody. So simple interest is relatively simple. It is only charged on the original investment, which makes it kind of easy to calculate. So we're going to go through and try to figure out how simple interest works using an example. So it says Carlos invests $1,000 in an account that earns 10% per year simple interest. How much money will he have at the end of five years? So I'm going to highlight some important information here. He is investing $1,000. And that $1,000 is going to earn 10% every year in simple interest. Now, I am going to warn you, 10% is a very high interest rate. You do not often earn 10% interest on any investment. Um, so I just picked that number because it works out nicely in this question. And then it says, how much money will he have at the end of five years? So that's how long he's going to leave it invested for. So he's going to put $1,000 in this account, he's going to leave it there for five years, and then he's going to take it out at the end and see how much money he has. So I made a little table. It says year, interest, and total amount. So year zero is just when he goes to the bank and opens that account, he puts in $1,000. He didn't earn any interest, he's just opening the account, he's starting with $1,000. So. After he leaves that money there for a full year, he earns interest because he gets 10% per year. So if one year goes by, he earns 10% interest. So I want to figure out what is 10% of 1,000. So to find 10% of 1,000, I'm going to take 1,000 and multiply it by 10%. But I can't just multiply it by 10. Now per cent means per 100. So it's 10 out of... 100. So I'm going to take 1,000 and multiply by 10 out of 100, or 10 divided by 100, which is what 10% means. So on my calculator, I'm going to do 1,000 times 10 divided by 100, and I get $100. So for putting his money in that account for one year, he earned 100 extra dollars. So the total amount in his bank account is now $1,000 plus that 10% interest or $100. So he now has $1,100. That's pretty awesome. So he leaves the money in for another year. So he's going to earn another 10%. Now he is not earning 10% of what's currently in his account. He is earning 10% of that $1,000. So it's the same thing. 10% of 1,000 is still 100. So he just gets another $100. So we add that on to say that he now has $1,200 at the end of year two. So another year rolls around. We hit the end of year three. He gets 10% of $1,000 again, which is still $100. So he gets another $100. So $1,200 plus $100 gives me $1,300. In year four, same idea, he gets another $100 from his original investment. We're going to add that on to get $1,400 in total. And then in his last year that he has invested the money for, he gets last installment of $100 for that last year. We add that on, $1,400 plus $100 is $1,500. So he started with $1,000. He now has $1,500, which means if you were to subtract $1,500 minus $1,000, he has made $500 in interest. So I did say that's a really high interest rate and not very realistic. But that's a lot of money. So it's nice that he got some interest on his account, so he now has more money than he did when he started. So there are a couple of follow-up questions to this. It says, is this linear or exponential? So we talked about linear and quadratic back at the very start of our course. 
So we said that something is linear if you are going up by the same amount every single time. And if I take a look at this, we are adding an extra $100 in interest every single year. So it is going up by $100 every time, which makes it linear. So if you're going up by the same number every single time, that's linear. Now we didn't get a chance in our previous unit to talk about what makes something exponential. So if something is exponential, instead of adding the same number every time, we are multiplying by the same number every time. So this one clearly we're adding $100. We will see some examples of other things where we do multiply every time to get our next number and then it will be exponential. But this one is definitely linear. So is this linear or exponential? Linear. Okay, our next question says, write an equation that you could use to calculate the amount of money after n years. So the table is fine, but if he left that money invested for 20 years, I don't want to have to keep making this table longer and longer and longer. So I want to know, is there a way to make an equation that would work for any number of years that I could use to calculate with? So I do notice that we started with $1,000 and then we added $100 every single time. So I started with 1,000 and then I added 100. So this is 1,000 plus 100. I missed a zero. There we go. And then this next one is 1,000 plus 100 and then plus another 100 or $200 I've added on now or two $100 amounts. This one is 1,000 plus three $100 amounts of interest. So what's happening here is we started with $1,000 and then we added on an extra $100 for every single year. So for my equation, I am going to say, I think I'm gonna do A for amount. So the total amount of money is $1,000 to start plus $100 every year. So $100 times the number of years. So I have 1,000 plus 100 times N. And I can check to see if that works. If I took five years and I put five in here, 100 times five is 500 plus 1,000 is 1,500. So this equation would work, right, to help me figure out what it is for any number of years that I wanna sub in. Now my last part says develop a formula for calculating simple interest. So for this one, we're going to have to put our thinking caps on and see if we can come up with a way to calculate simple interest and not just for this specific question. So when I take a look at this equation that I have here, I have A for my final amount equals 1000. Now that $1000 is my starting amount. It was how much money Carlos put in at the beginning. So I'm going to down here just write kind of a little word equation. I'm going to say that my final amount of money equals how much I started with. So my starting amount or Carlos's starting amount plus where did that $100 come from? That $100 was my total interest that we earned every time, right? So I earned $100 interest every single time. And then that's times N, which was the number of years. Now I'm not gonna expect you to come up with this on your own. That's why we're doing it together, right? So don't panic about that. But we are going to try to come up with a formula we can use that would help us calculate anytime we want to calculate something. Okay, so final amount, that we're going to use the letter A. So I'm going to write A equals, and then the starting amount. So starting amount in finance actually has a name. It's called the principal, kind of like the principal of the school, except it's the starting amount, it's our principal amount. So we use the letter P, because it's the principal, that's what they use for finance formulas. Um, we could have come up with something different like S for starting amount, but P is actually the official term that we would use. Now the total interest, um, that in this case was $100. Now how did I get that $100?
I took the starting amount, the principal, and I multiplied it by my interest rate divided by 100. So I took the principal times the interest rate divided by 100. Now, if you take your interest rate and divide it by 100, there's actually kind of a letter that we use for that. So I'm going to say that my total interest is my principal times my interest divided by 100. We call that little i for my interest rate, but it's been divided by 100. And then it's times n, which is the number of years. So the final amount is the principal plus the principal times the interest rate um, times the number of years. Now, I can use this formula, but I'm going to give you one other version of it. I notice these both have a p in common. So we can common factor out the p and say a equals p times p divided by p is 1. And then if I divide out this p here, I get i times n. So the official formula that we're going to be using for our simple interest calculations is a equals p times 1 plus i n, where a is our final amount, p is our principal or our starting amount, 1 is just the number 1, i is our interest rate, but we have to divide it by 100, and then n is the number of years. So if you check out the next video, we will look at some examples of how to actually use the formula.